Hello everyone. Welcome to the video lecture by Society of Emergency and Cardiac Nurses of India. This is Sajid and in this lecture we will be dealing with cardiac electrophysiology. So to begin with, why is it important to learn about cardiac electrophysiology? What is the significance of this topic? It is that we know ECG or electrocardiography is a very important diagnostic tool and a monitoring parameter as far as clinical medicine is concerned. And we also understand that in cardiology arrhythmias or dysrhythmias are one of the commonest disorders that we come across. So to understand the basics of ECG, to understand the pathologies behind conditions like arrhythmias, it is very important to have basic knowledge on cardiac electrophysiology. So before describing in detail about the aspects of different aspects of cardiac physiology, we will have to know what are the different types of tissues that we have in cardiac myocardium. So the different types of tissues what we have are myocardium can be broadly divided into specialized myocardium and contractile myocardium. Under this specialized myocardium, we have tissues like SA node, then we have AV node, and then we have Purkinje cells. So these are the specialized myocardial cells. So what are the peculiarities of these cells? We know that SA node has got the property of automaticity. It can generate its own impulses. Yes, all these two categories including AV node and Purkinje cells have the property of automaticity, but the property of automaticity is fastest in the SA nodal cells. So that is one peculiarity of SA node. Understanding about AV node, we know that AV nodes are specialized in slow conduction. And we also know that Purkinje cells have sodium channels. They are specialized in fast conduction. So they have special properties and hence they are classified under specialized myocardium. And in addition, we have contractile myocardium here. So under contractile myocardium, we have atrial contractile myocardium and ventricular contractile myocardium. So these are how the tissues of myocardium or heart are differentiated, right? Now there is an other important or very significant property of these myocardial cells. Let's suppose that this is a myocardial cell and here we have another adjacent myocardial cell. So at their junctions, or here we have junctions, we have some fluid filled spaces and these fluid filled spaces are called as gap junctions. They are called as gap junctions. And what are the property of this gap junction? We, if we have some free cations moving through the intracellular fluid of one cell, it can easily communicate through the gap junction to the adjacent cell. 
So cations can easily move from one cell to the adjacent cell through these gap junctions. And this property of cardiac cells are called as electrical syncytium. They are in cardiac or myocardial cells are in electrical syncytium. If you, if you stimulate one single cell, if this cell is being stimulated, the wave or the stimulus, the wave of action potential or the wave of depolarization and uh, repolarization can easily cross across these boundaries and can be conducted to distant tissues. So they function as a single unit. If they contract, they contract as a single unit. So that is what is called as electrical syncytium. And this is a very important property of myocardial cells. Now, in this lecture, we have to learn under the heading of cardiac uh, electrophysiology, we need to understand the status of a cell in its resting phase. What are the electronic uh, electrologic changes that is taking place within a cell during its resting phase? And how is a resting membrane potential generated in its resting phase? We need to know. And in addition to that, we also need to know how an action potential is generated inside a cell, which is a continuation of the resting phase. And from there, how is the action potential conducted from one tissue to other? And how are these electrical changes that is happening inside a cell connected with or related with mechanical action or which is called as contraction of the particular muscle cell. So these are the things which we are going to discuss in detail in this session. So we were talking about the different types of myocardial cells, the peculiarity of those myocardial cells. We have a specialized myocardium and we have contracted myocardium. Under specialized myocardium, we have SA node, we have AV node, and we have Purkinje cells. And under contractile myocardium, we have atrial myocardium as well as ventricular myocardium. And we also discussed the concept of electrical syncytium in which the intercell junctions or the junctions between the myocardial cells have gap junctions through which the cations can freely move and which means one cell can easily excite the adjacent cell through free cationic movements and it acts as a together it together acts as a single unit and this property is what we call as electrical syncytium and now from now we have to begin the action of a cell a myocardial cell right from its resting phase so we are going to see a cell, a myocardial cell, and this cell is in its resting state. So we have a myocardial cell over here, right? And this cell is now in its resting phase. So obviously we know if this is a cell, it should have a nucleus and inside the nucleus, there should be genetic material and these genetic materials or the genes will be involved in protein synthesis and proteins will be produced which handles different functions of the cell we know this this is protein synthesis now the genetic material from this particular cell will produce a particular protein will produce a particular protein and this protein will be implanted here in the cell membrane. So we have a protein here and this protein is what we call as sodium potassium ATPase. So we have sodium potassium ATPase proteins distributed in several parts of the 
myocardial cells so this is first thing to understand now what are the functions of this particular channel now this is sodium potassium atpases they are active transport channels so active transport channels means they use atp for their function and what are their function they work continuously they work continuously and they push by burning one single molecule of atp they push three sodium ions outside the cell and two potassium ions are taken into the cell this function is being done continuously so the sodium potassium atpase protein they are involved in active transport they employ atp they burn atp by burning one single molecule of atp they throws out three cations three molecules of sodium and they take up two k plus ions two potassium ions so this pump is continuously working the cell is in its state of resting the cell is resting the pump is working now what happens if it continues for a while sodium ions are being pushed out of the cell and potassium ions are being taken into the cell so at some point we understand that intracellular space is rich in potassium and extracellular space becomes rich in sodium so to understand it better you can imagine it like the cells are like a bag of potassium a bag of potassium immersed in a fluid of sodium so extracellular compartment having high concentration of sodium and intracellular compartment having high concentration of potassium which means a gradient has been created there is a concentration gradient has been created so what is the concentration gradient sodium is higher here sodium is low here potassium is higher here within the cell and potassium is low here so the concentration gradient is created so what happens when we have a concentration gradient created always the molecules the ions tend to move from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration so what does it do the sodium ions tend because its concentration is higher here it tends to move from the extracellular fluid to the intracellular place but the problem here is we have sodium channels here but the sodium channels are not functional during the resting phase the sodium channels are not functional and because the sodium channels are not functional in spite of having a higher concentration the sodium will not be able to move into the cell now moving into the intracellular compartment here also we have a higher concentration gradient of an ion which is not sodium but it is potassium and in case of potassium contrary to what we had in sodium the ion channels are not closed instead the ion channels for potassium are open so here we have ion channels for potassium and these ion channels are open so what happens potassium will leak through these ion channels and it will slowly migrate to the extracellular space so just for another recap we know that because of the constant function of sodium potassium atpase molecule active transport is happening three molecules of sodium three ions of sodium are being thrown out of the cell 
and two ions of potassium is being taken into the cell a concentration gradient is created sodium concentration is higher outside and potassium concentration is higher inside in spite of having a higher sodium concentration outside the cell the sodium is not able to move into the cell because of the closed sodium channels at the same time because of the higher concentration gradient potassium is able to move out of the cell because the potassium channels in the cell membranes are open so that is the story with concentration gradient now along with concentration gradient we have something called as electrical gradient also because with burning of one single molecule of atp we the cell is throwing out three cations and it is only gaining two cations it is throwing out three cations but it is only gaining two cations which means net effect is that the cell is losing potassium or the cell is losing cation so the net effect is that the cell is losing cation so in addition to the loss of cation which we have here there is also leaky potassium channels in the cell which are taking out additional potassium from the intracellular space to the extracellular space so the cell is moving more and more towards negative voltage state during its resting time say for example with the process of the sodium potassium atpase it is losing cations so because of losing these cations maybe the cell might have developed a potential of negative 5 millivolt in addition to that we have leaky potassium channels so the cell is losing more and more cations so the cell becomes more and more negative in voltage channels so the minus 5 millivolt will be increasing in negativity it will become minus 10 millivolt minus 20 millivolt minus 40 millivolt and ultimately it reaches up to minus 90 millivolt which is what is called as the resting membrane potential so at resting phase again just to recap during resting phase the sodium potassium atpase is functional three sodium ions are being taken out of the cell and two potassium is being taken into the cell there we have a loss of cations for the cell and in addition to that through the leaky potassium channels the cells are losing cations and slowly by slowly the cell is moving towards more negative charge more negative voltage so it reaches up to minus 90 millivolts and this is what we call as resting membrane potential so which ion channel is responsible for resting membrane potential which ion channel is responsible is it sodium or is it potassium because sodium channels are not functional here sodium channels are locked sodium is not able to go inside the cell it is the leaking of potassium that is resulting in the development of resting membrane potential so the efflux or the outward movement of potassium from the cell is responsible for the development of this resting membrane potential which is minus 90 millivolt it is the efflux or the outward movement of the potassium ions that is responsible for development of the development of the resting membrane potential which is minus 90 millivolt and this sets the stage now i told you the cell is in a resting phase now this sets the stage for the cell to go into the action phase and develop the action potential when the cell is active so the stage is actually set for the action potential so that is the story of resting membrane potential